Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve equations with one unknown. And this is another video in a series that I've been doing to help you prepare for the ATITs, the HESI, the ACT and SAT to review up on that a little bit. I'll put a link in the description below to a playlist that has all my math videos in it. And at the end of this video you can take a free quiz that's really short on our website to help test you on your knowledge. Now a lot of people when they take a look at an equation like this they will absolutely panic. I do believe that some people have a true allergy to algebra. But that's okay because there are three types of people in the world. Those who are good at math and those who aren't. You'll get that later. But anyway, what we basically want to do with this equation is we want to try to move the variable, which in this case is an x, to one side and the number to the other side because that is going to help us solve and find out what x in this equation actually represents. So we want to end up with something like x equals whatever the number is and we have to find out what that is. Now in order to find out what x is we have to use a few basic rules which I will tell you about as we solve the problem. And the best advice I can give you is just try to learn how the rules work and practice problems over and over and that's how you'll get this. So let's solve this problem. What this is saying is 2 times some number plus 5 equals 15. Now Again, we're trying to get x on one side and the number on the other side. So in order to do this, the first thing that I see here is that it's a plus 5. Now anytime you have just a number like plus 5 or minus 5 or something like that, you can use a rule called the addition principle. What is the addition principle? Well, basically the, additional, the addition principle just states that whenever you have a plus number or minus number, you can do the opposite on this side of the equation to cancel it out. But whatever you do to this side of the equation, you also have to do to the other side of the equation. So basically you're manipulating the equation around. It's going to remain the same. You're just manipulating it to find out so you can solve for x. So in this case, we have 2x plus 5. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the addition principle to say, since that's a plus 5, we're going to say minus 5 because we want to cancel that out. So we have a plus 5. We're going to take 5 away and we'll have nothing on this side. But what we do to this side, we got to do to this side. So since we said minus 5 here, we've got a minus 5 here. Okay, so let's carry our problem down. Now we're going to have 2x, this canceled out. So we have nothing left there to carry down equals 15 minus 5 is what? It's 10. So 2x equals 10. Okay, we're getting close now. We almost have our variable and our number, but we have a 2 in front of it, and we got to get rid of that 2 because we want to end with just what x by itself stands for. So in order to simplify this and solve this down even further, what we can do is we can use another principle. It's a lot like the addition principle, but this is called the multiplication principle. And the multiplication principle basically states the same thing. You can multiply or divide on one side of the equation, but what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side to keep the equation balanced. So what we're going to do here, we want to get rid of this 2, and it's 2 times a number. In order to get rid of the 2, we're going to divide it by 2. So that's how we're going to get rid of it. We're going to just put that over 2. Now what we do to one side of the equation, we got to do to the other side. That's what the rule states. So it's going to be equals 10 over 2. Now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit because 2 divided by 2 is going to cancel out and that's going to give us a 1x equals 10 over 2. Now whenever you have a 1x, that's the same thing as saying just x by itself. So it's usually helpful just to get rid of that so you don't get confused. So it's just going to be x equals 10 over 2. And that's basically our answer, but because this is an improper fraction, we could go ahead and simplify that even more because 10 divided by 2 is going to be what? 5. 2 times 5 is 10, so basically x equals 5 is another way to simplify it. Okay, now let's work another one of these equations. And as you will see, this one looks a little more complicated. It's 2 times... 5x plus 4 in parentheses equals 7x plus 11. And again, it looks complicated, but it's not going to be that bad. We're going to get through this by using a few simple rules here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of this parentheses because that makes it look complicated. And so let's just go ahead and solve that first because that's what we need to get rid of. And to do that, we use something called distributive property. And all that means is basically you multiply this number here times this, and then multiply that number times that and carry it down and you'll have your answer that will get rid of the parentheses. So what we do is we say 2 times 5x, that's going to give us 10x plus 
two times four is going to give us eight. So we just carry that down. So it's going to turn into 10x plus eight equals, and we'll go ahead and carry this down, seven x plus 11. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and attack these numbers here because again, those are the ones I like to get rid of first, and we do that using the addition principle, which states that we can do the opposite of the number here to get rid of it on this side of the equation, but we gotta do the same here. So it's a plus eight, so how do we get rid of a plus eight? We subtract eight. So we're gonna subtract eight from this side. What we do here, we gotta do here. So we, we come over here to the number on this side and it's plus 11, so we're gonna say 11 minus eight. Okay, now let's go ahead and carry this down. So we're gonna have 10x plus eight minus eight. Those cancel out. We're gonna have nothing to carry down there. We just put our equal sign and it's gonna be seven x plus what's 11 minus eight. That's gonna give us three. Okay, so we just have one number left, but we have two of these coefficients here that, with a coefficient and a variable. Now, how are we gonna get rid of this? Well, in order to get rid of this, we're gonna use, again, the addition property. We're gonna take seven X and try to move that to the left side because we want the variables and then the numbers. So in order to do that, again, the addition principle, we have a positive seven X, so we're going to subtract seven X. But what we do here, we gotta do here. So it's gonna be 10 X minus seven X. Okay, so we'll go ahead and carry that down. 10 X minus seven X is gonna give us what? Three X. So three X equals, that's canceled out now and we have just a positive three left over. So we're gonna have three X equals three. And now we can use the multiplication principle to go ahead and finish this so that we just have an X left. And what we do, it's three times a number. So in order to get rid of it, we're gonna do the opposite, which is divide. So we're gonna divide that by the number here, which is three. And we gotta do it to the other side because what we do to one side, we gotta do to the other side. So it's gonna be three divided by three. So those threes will just basically cancel out. We'll have an X equals three divided by three equals one. So our answer is X equals one. Now I should go ahead and stop right here and tell you that the cool part about these types of equations is that you can take the final answer and go back and substitute it in the original equation to see if it works out right. So let me show you how to do that real fast. This is a way you can check yourself. So let's substitute one where the X is here, which would be five times one. And let's see if this works out. So we start with the parentheses, five times one is five, plus four equals nine. I'll erase this here. And so what we're gonna have um, is two times nine equals seven times one plus 11. Okay, two times nine is gonna give us 18 equals, seven times one is seven plus 11, so 18 is going to equal 18. Does that sound right? Absolutely, we are done, it checks out, so we are good to go. Okay, now let me show you one of these in fraction format so you can get a hang of that because they will have these in fraction format sometimes. So here I have x over 10 equals one half. And this looks a little bit complicated, but again, if we just follow these simple rules, you'll find out that it's actually quite easy. So if you'll remember in the last equation, it looks something like this. There was like a three X equals whatever the number was. And I told you that to get rid of this three so that you just have an X, what you need to do is since it's multiplication right here, three times X, you just simply divide by three and that's gonna cancel out the three and just leave you with an X equals, but you had to also do it to this side as well. You had to divide whatever number was here. If it was a three, you had to divide that by three as well. Well, it's the same principle here. We're gonna apply the multiplication principle, but since it's division, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the opposite, which is multiplication. So in order to get X isolated here, we're gonna to need to cancel this out. So all we do is we multiply the top by whatever's on the bottom. So it's an X, we're gonna multiply that by 10 because now you'll see we have a 10 here and a 10 here, and 10 divided by 10 is gonna give you one, it's gonna cancel it out, and we'll just have that X left. But again, what you do to one side, you gotta to do to the other. So we have a one here, we're gonna to have to multiply that by 10 on this side. So we'll go ahead and carry this down. Again, the 10s cross out, we have an X equals, one times 10 is 10 over two. Now, our answer is X equals 10 over two, but we could simplify this even further because 10 can be divided by two um, equally, which will give you five, a whole number. So because 10 divided by two, two will go into 10 five times. So our answer is X equals five. Now again, you can always double check your answer by putting that in here to make sure it works out. 
So x over 10, we'll put the five where the x was. Five over 10, does that equal one half? Yes, because five over 10 can actually be reduced to one half if you simplify that. So one half equals one half. Our equation checks out, that's how we solve that. Okay, now I'm gonna do a slightly more complicated fraction type equation to show you how this works. And again, you use the exact same principles. We don't have any parentheses, so we don't have to worry about doing that distributive property thing. But we do have the variables and the numbers, and we're gonna get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. So I always like to start with the number part because that's just a little bit easier. Let's begin to work the numbers to the right and the variables to the left. So we have x over four minus one third. We wanna get the one third to the other side of the equation. How do we do that? The addition principle, which states that we do the opposite to one side to get rid of the number, but whatever we do here, we gotta do here. So this is x over four minus one third. What's the opposite of minus one third? Positive one third. That's how we're gonna get rid of it here. So we add one third so that we can cancel that out. But what we do to one side, we gotta to do to the other. We can't be greedy. So we're gonna add one over 30 here. Now we'll go ahead and carry, carry this down. It's gonna be x over four. We eliminated that, so we don't worry about that. Equals x over two plus now we have two thirds and one third. Now I did a video on adding and subtracting fractions. So if you're a little fuzzy on that, go back and check that video out. But whenever you add and subtract fractions, you always wanna make sure the denominator is the same. You can't just add and subtract fractions if they have different denominators. In this case, they are the same, so we can just go ahead and add that. And how you do that, you just carry the denominator over, which in that case is a three, and then you add the numerator. So two plus one equals three. So it's three over three, or another way to say that is just simply one, because three divided by three is one. So it's x over two plus one. Okay, now, we're gonna to try to get this x over two to the left side. So we have number on one side and all our variables on the other side. How do we do that again? The addition principle, because it's a positive x over two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract x over two. That's gonna help us get rid of that. But what we do to one side, we gotta to do to the other. So that's gonna be minus x over two on this side as well. So we'll just go ahead and rewrite that here. That's gonna be x over four minus x over two equals one. Now, we can't subtract these fractions because they have different denominators. And like I just said, we can't just add and subtract fractions if they have different denominators. So in order to proceed with this problem, we have to find the least common denominator here. And whenever you find the least common denominator, the easiest way for me is I look at the bigger of the two and I just first ask the question, will the smaller denominator actually multiply into that larger denominator evenly and produce the whole number? And if so, then that's your least common denominator. And if not, you begin to multiply this larger number by two, by three, by four, until you'll find a number that both this will multiply into and that will multiply into. In this case, we're lucky because four, will two go into four evenly? Yes, so our least common denominator is actually gonna be four. So let's go ahead and convert these fractions out and get the common denominators here. So what we're gonna do, the, the new denominator is gonna be four for both of those fractions because that's the least common denominator and it's gonna be a minus sign. So what we'll say is four will go into four how many times? One, you multiply one by the numerator. X times one is gonna be one X or another way of saying that is just simply X. So it's gonna be X over four. Two will go into four times, or two will go into four how many times? Two, so we multiply x times two. Two times x is what? It's two x, so it's gonna be two x there equals one, we carry that one down. Okay, now the denominators are the same and we can go ahead and subtract this out. So one x minus two x is gonna give us negative one x, so it's gonna be negative x or one x, but another way of saying that's x, over four, equals one. Okay, we're almost done with this equation. Now again, we're gonna use the multiplication principle because we want to isolate this x on one side and get all the numbers on the other. And the way we do that is, since this is a division problem, we're gonna multiply. So because it's, it's dividing by four, we're gonna multiply that top number by four and that is gonna help us cancel that out. But what we do to one side, we gotta to do to the other. And we just have a whole number here, so we'll just multiply that whole number by four and what we're gonna have now is negative x equals four. 
Now, whenever you are done with the equation, usually you want the variable to be a positive number, and if there's any negative number, you usually want to move it to this end. So all you do is basically you can multiply that by negative one and multiply this one by negative one, and that will make that a negative times a negative will give you a positive, and negative one times four will give you negative four. Basically, you just flip it. So if it's negative x equals four, it'll be x equals negative four. And that's our answer. And again, we can go back and you can plug that in and you can check it. Okay, I'll show you how to work one more of these and it has parentheses, it has a fraction, it has everything, but we're gonna use those exact same principles and it will be easy. So what we wanna do first is get rid of the parentheses and we do that by using the distributive property, which is gonna be multiplying two times x over two and then carry down the plus sign and then two times three is gonna give us six. So that's how we're gonna do that. So how do we multiply two times x over two? Basically, it's just multiplying fractions, and I have a video on how to do that. But basically, I like to set it up like this, two over one, because two, a whole number, is can also be ex expressed as a fraction by simply putting it over one. I like to do that because it keeps me straight. Times x over two, we just multiply across the top and multiply over the across the bottom, and we're done. So two times x equals two x. One times two equals two. So it's gonna be two x over two, but because those numbers are the same, we could actually cross those out and have just x. And that will make things easier. So two times x over two equals x, and then plus two times three equals six, and then equals five x minus two. Now to get rid of this six here, we're gonna use the addition principle, which states that we do the opposite on this side. It's a positive six, so we're gonna subtract six, but we gotta do it to this side as well. That'll cancel that out. We'll be left with an x equals five x. Okay, negative two minus six is gonna be negative eight. So it'll be five x minus eight. You always wanna keep your negative and positive signs straight because that's an easy way you can mess up. Now we wanna get this five x over to the left side. And to do that again, we use the addition principle. So it's a positive five x. So we're gonna do a negative five x or subtract five x. While we do to that side, we also go to do that one. So it'll be x minus five x equals negative eight. Okay, now again, whenever you have an x by itself, that's the same thing as saying one x. You could, it's the same thing. So one x minus five x. What is that gonna give us? That's gonna give us a negative number. So it's gonna be negative four x equals negative eight. Okay, now we can solve using the multiplication principle because whenever you have a number multiplied against the variable, you can eliminate that by dividing it by that same number. So we're gonna divide that by four here, and we're also gonna divide this one by four. We'll make that a negative four so that it cancels out the negative sign, and that'll be negative. So negative four divided by negative four cancels out. We're left with x equals negative eight divided by four will give us a positive two, so x equals two. So that's a little bit of how you work these uh, equations with one unknown variable. I hope that helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to take the free quiz.